Hi, yeah. so this is the second lesson. It's the first bid for the second lesson of the um, graphs of inequalities in cubics. Right, so let's see what it says here then. So it says quadratic graphs all have the same basic shape, a U or an N. Cubic graphs don't always look the same. So like y equals x cubed looks like that. It goes flat and then it goes up. But then also, the flat's not there. I've made the flat much bigger than what it is. Uh, but other cubic graphs could look like that as well. So if a is less than zero, similar idea if it was my... Oh, God, there's no way I like it. If it was minus x cubed, it might go like that. Or I could have something which looks like that. There. So the basic shapes are slightly different. So you've got to be a little bit careful. Good thing is, is you can actually sketch it and check what it looks like. Now I'm going to use poly as opposed to the sketching function. So if you look, it's not an x cubed, it's not overly complex, but it is a positive x cubed. So I know my general shape will look something like that. The y-intercept is minus 15, because that tells us what it is. So when x is 0, y is minus 15. For the x-intercepts, where I put y equal to 0, if I put it into poly, it gives me x is minus 3, x is minus 1, and x is 5. So all I need to do, and to be fair, I tend to draw the shape and then add the axes later. It's harder to think about than what's going on here. So I've got roots at minus 3, minus 1, and 5, and it crosses out at, uh, at minus 15. So what I'm thinking is I've got three roots, and it crosses at minus 15. So it could be something that looks like that, something like that. So I tend to draw the graph and put the axes later. So it's harder for me with this with the axes already here to make sure I get the right shape. So let's go with a 3, minus 3, a minus 1, minus 15, plus 5. So there's my 5, there's my minus 15, there's my minus 1, there's my minus 3. Whew, that's okay. So there's one for you to have a go at, which, <laughs> which already tells you that your roots are x is minus 1, x is 3, and x is minus 4. But also, oh, see, the, the first question is easy, the second question is rock hard. If you expand this bracket, all these brackets out, you'll get a minus x cubed. So the shape of it, you know, is going to be an upside down one. Let's have a look what they've done. Yeah, so, so the shape is upside down. If I do the 1 times 3 times 4, that tells me the y-intercept. And I've got the roots there, the minus 1, the 3, the minus 4. So then I can graph that looking something like that. Whew. So hopefully that was moderately okay. Probably wasn't because the complexity of the, of the one for you was much bigger than the one I've just done on the board. Right. This is quite nice. The squared tells us it's repeated. So it just touches. So the minus at the front is telling me that it's going to be, the shape will be that shape. Um, oops, let me move that down. For the y-intercept, if I put x is equal to 0, so if x equals 0, that actually gives me y out of 0. And then for the x-intercept, the root, if I put y is equal to 0, so if I put it into poly, it'll give me 0, but it'll also give me minus 4 twice. Now that minus 4 twice, that's the bit that tells me that it touches. So what I've got, I've got an upside down graph that just touches the x-axis at minus 4. But it also goes through the origin. 
It's not the best picture. But that's the idea, that it just touches at minus four, and it goes through the origin, and it's upside down. Like I say, the good thing is, is that you can graph it. The graph it, you can get a nice picture of it as well. But it's quite interesting that with the, the, the repeated root part. So I think there's one for you to have a go at. There is a question for you. I wonder if it's worth me stopping there so it doesn't feel like there's a lot. Because there's two extra uh, questions here for time to go at. Right, okay. Right, see you later. Bye.